welcome back to the news today. This is One on One. Well, Jahan Shabaktia wrote the book, I am an Iranian, a CIA and a Mossad spy. Well, Mr. Bakhtiar is the grandson of Shapur Bakhtiar, the last prime minister of the Shah's regime in Iran. Well, in July 1980, he was with his grandfather in his apartment when a failed assassination attempt took place. Well, as he claims, later in life he was recruited to the Mossad and the CIA, and he tells his story in the new book. Well, he joins us now here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Well, so, Mr. Bakhtiar, let's begin with what led you out of Iran specifically and into the CIA and Mossad, as you claim? Well, I left Iran at the age of eight, and I went to the United Kingdom to pursue my education. And um, by 1979, the revolution happened, unfortunately, and uh, I never went back because, as you can imagine, my family was persecuted by the arrival of the apocalypse which is the only term I can use by referring to Khomeini's Islam. And um, I stayed away until the age of 40 when I went back. And when I went back, I only had one mission, and, well, and that was to take my revenge for the death of my grandfather and the death of my mother, which followed two weeks after the death of my grandfather in August of 1991. Well, can you tell us about the day that failed assassination attempt, where you were present with your grandfather there. I was, I was in the, the apartment in 1980 when Anis Nakash and a couple of Iranians sent by Khomeini, paid by Khomeini, and unfortunately something terrible happened, and that was the death of two police officers, French police officers, and the death of our neighbor. And she was a young woman, and she was shot in the head by Anis Nakash. That was the first time I had ever seen a corpse in my life, and it's a scene that I will never forget. But that was my second run-in with the mullahs. The first time they tried to kidnap me, about eight months before that, when I was at school in England. And luckily, the British Secret Service dismantled this terrorist cell and I was saved, and I was taken to a safe house for many months until everything became secure. But they finally reached your grandfather there, and you say that, that fueled you to get back at the regime. Now, tell us about how you were actually recruited by the CIA and the Mossad. I was not recruited by the CIA. To be perfectly honest, it was I who contacted the CIA through a friend of mine who was in the State Department. And I was put in touch with a gentleman by the name of Sam, which I have written about him in the book. At the time, I did not know that Sam was actually the chief of station of the entire Middle East. And for many years, I spent many hours with him, learning many tricks. And um, he was an incredible mentor for me. And I managed, after a few months of going back to Iran, to let's say, smuggle out information that he had requested and much more. So we developed a fantastic relationship together. And altogether, in about three and a half years, we met 57 times out of Iran. And every time I traveled and I came back, there was always a danger that I would be stopped at the airport. But my excuse for all these travels was simple. I told the Iranian government that I had returned to Iran to circumvent the sanctions. That is, I was going to provide them with hundreds of millions of dollars for them to project, to f I'm sorry, to finance their projects in Iran. And they verified this through certain banks. And the banks who had been paid to lie actually lied. So I was quite safe. So even after the murder of your grandfather and you being his grandson, you, the regime trusted you in a way. That sounds surprising to me. I'm sorry, I could not hear the last words of your question. But the regime, in a way, it seems, trusted you, or you must have been under heavy scrutiny, having been, the, having been uh, who you were, the grandson of a former prime minister assassinated by the regime. Absolutely. I can assure you, for the first six months, I was under watch day and night. Every phone call, every email, uh, and uh, I knew that, and that was not a really a problem. But I knew after a while they would you know, get tired of looking for me because they don't really have that kind of manpower either. So after six months, I was lucky enough to meet a man within the regime who was very much interested in financing projects. And I befriended him. 
And uh, after a few months, he began to trust me by showing me different programs and telling me how material is brought into Iran via Turkey and via the United Arab Emirates. So I began to really infiltrate all the bunyad. Bunyad is the name of the foundation in Iran. It's like a state within a state. And they only have to answer to the supreme leader, which is the psychotic man by the name of Khamenei. Well, tell us more specifically about your contact with the Mossad in Israel. Well, it was an extraordinary coincidence in a way, I must say. I, I ran into an Israeli gentleman when I was in Africa, and I actually asked him to put me in touch with the Mossad. And uh, he laughed at me and told me, do you think every Israeli knows the Mossad agent? And I told him, probably not. But I told him that I had some very interesting information for him if he managed to do so. So I took a trip to Israel, and I gave him the information. And a few months later, when I was in Buenos Aires in Argentina, I received a phone call from a gentleman who asked me to fly to Europe and meet with him. And we began to discuss a huge network of financial dwellings done by three Iranian agents, which I have named in the book, in Dubai. I began to tell, to show them how Iran is laundering money through Dubai and through other countries. And they began to dig in extensively, and they realized that this money goes not only to other Iranians, but it also finances members of the Hamas and of Hezbollah. Therefore, it became a huge project. And one year later, after a huge operation that took us to several continents, we managed to obtain a laptop. And in that laptop, there was a gold mine. The names of the agents, names of the banks, the accounts, how the money is transferred, who are the Arab states helping the Islamic Republic of Iran. I can assure you there are many of them, which I don't really want to mention now, but I'm sure you can guess who they are. In 1979, they were dwelling on camels while we were having a great industry, and today the roles have reversed. Well, today with the Iranian regime uh, allegedly pursuing nuclear weapons now, uh, the ambitions that seem to have been growing throughout the years, uh, do you agree with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's assertion that this is one of the greatest threats to world order? I could not agree more with him. He is completely right when he says that do not be fooled by Rouhani for a second. There is no difference between Khamenei, Rouhani, Khatami, Fallahian, Rafsanjani. They are all the same. They came out of the same sewer. And their only aim today is to obtain the nuclear bomb. Because the day they do, they will become invincible. And they will not only be a threat to the neighboring countries, and of course Israel, the great enemy of Iran, but they will be a threat to the entire world. And I wish that the West would realize this and act upon it instead of thinking of putting more petrodollars in their pockets. Well, now you say act on it. Do you believe that there is any chance for a peaceful resolution to this issue, or is military option the only option? On Unfortunately, I believe that the military option is the only option. I do not believe that the mullahs are people that one can negotiate with. All you have to do is look at their curriculum vitae for the last 35 years. They have killed, tortured. They have done atrocities that are just unbelievable. I don't want to compare them to atrocities ha which happened between 1939 and 1945 to the Jewish people, but they have done things in our country which are unspeakable of. And this was one of the reasons that I ended up taking a man's life, because he was a butcher and he was doing, committing atrocities to young women and young boys in Evin prison. Well, and Mr. I, do no, I do not. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for your time in this program. Uh, and good luck with your new book here. I am an Iranian a CIA and a Mossad spy again. Uh, Mr. Jahanshah Bakhtiar, thank you for your time on our program. You're most welcome. Thank you for having me. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us tonight. We'll be back again tomorrow.